afternoon and today we're going to be looking at the group two so the alkali earth metals now there's a few things you need to learn in this topic one is some actual trends which we'll go up going through in a second two is some reactions and three is the solubility of them so in terms of the hydroxides and the sulfates it's a fairly short topic not really too much to learn in it so it shouldn't kill you We'll start off with the size. So the size of the group two metal is going down. Fairly obviously, it increases. Should know going down practically every, well every group it increases in size. Now the reason why do not simply state it is because of an increased amount of electrons. It's fairly bad scientific knowledge because you've learned in group one across the period fluorine is smaller than carbon yet fluorine has more electrons. So when answering that, if you are seeing an increase in size going down the group, you need to get it po across the point that it's because of an increase in energy levels or an increase in shells. Next one, electronegativity. Should recall the definition of that. So it's a power of an atom to attract electrons in a covalent bond. Going down the group. Think back to Chem 1, your three factors. You've got nuclear charge, you've got atomic radius, you've got shielding. So yes, the nuclear charge going down the group increases. So that will be supplying more traction. However, we've just said the radius increases. So an increase in radius will be reducing the attraction. And also, because there is an increasing amount of shells, there will be more shielding. That will also reduce the attraction. Hence, overall, electronegativity down the group decreases. First ionization energy. Buy one, get one free, exactly the same factors as that. So first ionization energy down the group decreases. Melting point. Now, I don't sort of know why they try to get across this general trend because there are other factors which take, which, are, which should be taken into account here. But roughly, you are going to be looking at the strength of the metallic bond. They are metals, intramolecular metallic bond. So do not waffle on about covalent, van der Waals, stuff like that. You will lose everything. So it is the attraction between the, the, the positive ions and the safety localized electrons. So going down the group, yes, the positive ions are getting bigger. But again, similar to these, the saved localized electrons will be suffering more shielding and will be further away. Hence, the attraction will be decreased. So the strength of the metallic bond going down the group will be decreased. And if the attraction's decreased, then you need to put in less energy to melt it. So melting point decreases down the group. If, however, you go and check that and look up the numbers and see magnesium is odd, yes, but it takes into account the other fact, as what I've said, how it's packed together and such. Okay, a couple of general reactions. Just going to use generic M just to stand for any of the metals here. It's the same thing, what happens with it. So when they react with cold water, hence why I've used the, the L there, liquid, it will be different when we look at steam, you will form hydroxide and hydrogen. Whereas with steam, you would get the oxide. So cold water, liquid, hydroxide, steam, gas, gaseous water, uh, well water vapour, you will get the oxide. Um, on one of the past exam questions, it asks sort of 
what would be a safety problem with this? It was, um, well, it did actually occur in real life where there was a car factory on fire and obviously the car factory had lots of metal in it. Now the fire brigade came along and tried to put out the metal fire with water. Obviously the problem that happened is that produces hydrogen. All the fire about just went up further, ignited the hydrogen. Bit of a definition and irony there, the fire brigade caused a bigger fire. So safety problem there, hydrogen ignites, explodes, highly flammable. With this, we need to look at the actual solubility of the hydroxides. So I'm just going to rub off the one underneath. So solid there, just in case it's small scribbling. Going down the group, the solubility of the hydroxides increases. So very insoluble. You will see a white precipitate formed. Make sure you are okay with your wording there. So a precipitate is a solid coming out of solution. Do not say white floaty bits or rubbish like that, which will get you no marks. So magnesium hydroxide, very insoluble. Barium hydroxide, soluble. So barium hydroxide, you will not see anything come out of solution. You will just see the floaty solution. Just to show an example for sort of how to get an ionic equation for this. So here we've got magnesium chloride reacting with sodium hydroxide. You get magnesium hydroxide and sodium chloride. I'll just put in the state symbols. So break them up into ions. So we've got that. Notice I did not break that up. It is solid as precipitated out. So you can see quite clearly there is some things which are spectators. The sodium ions, the chloride ions, they are still there in the actual product. So we can ignore these. So my ionic equation, there. So the magnesium ions react with the hydroxide ions and precipitate out forming magnesium hydroxide. Now the sulfates, so the sulfates are the other ones you need to look at in terms of solubility. So hydroxide solubility increases down the group. Sulfate is the opposite. Sulfate solubility decreases down the group. 
So barium sulfate will be the one that precipitates out this time, whereas magnesium sulfate will stay in solution. So it'll break up the wind's ions, it'll not precipitate out. So an example, what we can use So there, the sulfate, barium sulfate, would precipitate out. So again, you can do the same as before, sort of breaking it up into ions. So the chloride and the, the sodium ions, you will notice, with that being aqueous across there, would cancel each other out again. So your ionic equation would just be barium 2 plus, plus the SO4 2 minus, goes to barium sulfate. So barium chloride is used as a test to see if there is any sulfate ions present. Exam questions do like this a lot, so make sure you understand it. They will ask you things as well like why does it need to be acidified? If there is any carbonate ions about, that will form. That is also a white precipitate, the same as barium sulfate. So we need to do something to get rid of these carbonate ions. So that is why we add the acid, because the acid would react with the carbonate and give you carbon dioxide and water. So it gets rid of them. So this will no longer form. In terms of which acid to use, We use either hydrochloric acid or nitric acid. Reason why? Why not use sulfuric acid? Well, look at what's in it. There is a sulfate ion in sulfuric acid. If you are testing to see if there is any sulfate ions present, if you add sulfuric acid, well, the answer is yes. You've just bloody added them. Right, some uses just to finish it off. Magnesium hydroxide. If you ever heard of milk of magnesia, you've had an upset stomach, this is what it is. And balance that. So the magnesium hydroxide neutralizes the hydrochloric acid, gives you some harmless product here. So upset stomachs, milk of magnesia. Calcium hydroxide reacts in a very similar manner. Calcium hydroxide, however, they use to neutralize the pH on fields. The reason why is if you think about what we said before, the solubility of the hydroxides if the solubility increases coming down the group, it means it is giving off more OH minus ions coming down the group. So barium hydroxide gives off lots of OH minus. Magnesium hydroxide doesn't really give off many. If it was a highly basic solution, when you drink it, it's going to burn your throat quite badly. Barium hydroxide would do that. So barium hydroxide releases a lot of these, magnesium hydroxide does not. So the hydroxide ions are 
or what react with the hydrogen ions and neutralize to form water. So calcium hydroxide, what they use on the fields, is probably too basic for ourselves. It would neutralize your stomach acid. We need it to digest things. So that's also why the pH would increase coming down the group. So magnesium hydroxide, pH 9, 10. Barium hydroxide, pH of about 14. Because it's producing lots of these, it's removing the hydrogen ions from water, hence very few hydrogen ions further up on the pH scale. Um, other main use what you need to know, barium sulfate. This is used in x-ray imaging. X-rays are blocked by this chemical. So you will take some, drink it or inject it, and it'll sort of go through the body, line the gut, things like that. So when they shine the x-ray at you, they will see dark patches where this is. So it'll block the actual x-rays. So do not just say x-ray, it doesn't give off x-rays, it blocks x-rays. It's used in the imaging. The reason why it's used is because with this being very insoluble, as we said before, the, sol the, the solubility of the sulfates decreases down the group. If it was soluble, barium is a very toxic metal. If that got into your body, it would kill you. So it needs to stay combined with the sulfate. It needs to be very insoluble. And that is it, I believe, for group two.